This summer, I worked at a shelter that serves immigrants and refugees, leaving containment centers. Uh, it's located in Austin, Texas, and it's called Casa Marina. Uh, I was really lucky to be able to come to a place I'd never been before to do the type of work that I really, really wanted to do. Uh, and as the year progressed, I felt more and more sure that what I wanted to focus on was immigration. This is A2 on Gunter. Uh, CASA is a larger network of shelters, primarily located in three houses in one cul-de-sac in East Austin, Texas. Um, this was the main house uh, where we would receive people uh, at all hours of the day and night, sometimes directly from ICE officers themselves. Uh, there were experiences I had where um, even in the middle of the night I would be between uh, someone who had been detained and an ICE officer themselves. Here uh, is where we kept a lot of the essential objects for folks leaving detainment. Often people would come with absolutely nothing, which meant toothbrushes uh, were a form of currency that were really important. People were coming from all over the world, often traversing the Darien Gap, which is the jungle between Colombia and Panama, one of the most dangerous places in the world, not only because of the natural elements that um, govern it, but also because of the drug trade that runs through. Uh, so we were serving individuals from all over the world, and often they journeyed very, very far. These are three residents. Uh, I took these photos as um, identification photos to be used for CASA IDs. We were able to leverage those photos and to create uh, forms of identification of the city of Austin that helped people get access to healthcare. This was one of my most important projects this summer, and talk to me if you're curious about why. Though CASA wasn't originally intended to house children, this summer, uh, due to the politics of family-child um, separation and the way those optics played out on a national level, often also due to overcrowding, uh, people from Customs and Border Patrol would release families with nowhere to go. We would have lots of families who would come to us even though our facility wasn't treated for children. We found a way to adapt as a staff. Uh, though this was extremely challenging, we were thrilled we were able to provide a much safer housing uh, and keep families together as they came to us. I bonded quite a bit with the children who were there over the summer, even as we sent them on to other places. One of the most difficult cases um, was when an 18-year-old who had a one-year-old daughter that she gave birth to in detainment, who she'd been separated from, came to us and had really limited knowledge of how to take care of her daughter. Um, ultimately, uh, when she was giving her daughter a bath and her attention was diverted, her daughter drowned. I feel that this is a systemic failure and not at all her fault, but watching on an individual level the dynamics play out of social stratification was really painful. At the same time, life was happening at CASA. These are Alvin and Kelvin, two twins born to their mother, Stella, healthfully in the US. She traversed the Darien Gap while pregnant uh, and was still able to deliver a term. Here are more of the children who were at CASA. Oliver on the left was my KC. Um, Carlos is on the right holding his little brother before church. Uh, Oliver and I went to church, or went to um, immigration court together, also church, um, but immigration court together. His father was unable to accompany him, even though he also successfully came from Honduras, because there was an order of deportation um, with his name on it. Had he presented himself at court with his son, he would have been deported and their family would have been separated. I was happy to stand in for Oliver's dad for the day. Um, this is a screen grab of us doing our handshake, which got much more elaborate as the summer went on. Very, very special um, experience to bond with him. Natalie and Christina were two residents who I didn't know knew each other, but were detained, in fact, together. And so when Natalie was released and she saw Christina, she saw the first person she'd known since she'd left Cameroon. Uh, I was able to watch their reunion, and they were even kind enough to let me take a picture of it. This underlies some of the principles of working at CASA that I think are the most important. Um, here uh, is me very, very sunburned, let's call attention to it, uh, <laughs> on a day where I was leading a trauma-informed ESL art activity um, centered around uh, collaging what people loved about their home countries. Uh, I was able to engage with my residents more about um, what they missed and how they felt as they integrated into uh, life in the U.S. in Austin specifically. <laughs> On the right we have a very crowded birthday party for all of the children who'd experienced a birthday in detainment in the last several months. Um, this is us celebrating broadly uh, birthdays. I'll be returning to CASA as a full-time staff member uh, this coming year uh, upon graduation as an operations coordinator uh, specifically with attention to uh, creating a trauma-informed ESL curriculum. Uh, that is 
really all I have to say. I feel really lucky to have been at CASA and to have been enabled to do so uh, through the Civic Grant. Thank you.